And now we return to our lead story this evening. A probe is underway in the death of 43-year-old Eric Garner. Garner, as we all know, died Thursday after police attempted to take him into custody for allegedly selling loose cigarettes. A bystander caught the entire altercation on camera. Video shows Garner being put into what seems to be a chokehold and pulled to the ground. Garner, who was asthmatic, could be heard telling police that he couldn't breathe on numerous occasions. Two police officers, they have been reassigned, including Officer Daniel Pantaleo, the plainclothes cop seen putting Garner in what appears to be a chokehold in that video. As defined in the department's patrol guide that this would appear to have been uh, a chokehold. Bratton, uh, the police commissioner, uh, Mayor uh, de Blasio said something as well where it looked to him to be a chokehold. Now, the PBA president, Pat Lynch, he called the decision to reassign the cops, quote, a completely unwarranted knee-jerk reaction for political reasons and nothing more, end quote. He also went on to say the decision denies Officer Pantaleo the very benefit of a doubt that has long been part of the social contract that allows police officers to face the risks of this difficult and complex job should also be noted that four EMS workers, they've also be re been reassigned, criticized for not performing CPR or giving Gardner oxygen or even having defibrillator there on the scene. Gardner's death, it has created, as we all know, a firestorm across New York. The New Yorkers against Bratton Group even held a small protest outside of City Hall today. Uh, they say the commissioner needs to go. We got Reverend Al Sharpton involved. He addressing a packed house at the historic Riverside Church and led rallies at his headquarters in Harlem and on Saturday um, in Staten Island. Different groups, different persuasions, different religions, different politics. But all of us need justice because okay. no one asked him what church he was a member of. Right. No one asked him whether he was a Democrat or Republican. Right. No one asked him whether he was one way, another way, left or right. They saw him and according to what I saw in the video, they disregarded his humanity. Right. And even when he said he couldn't breathe, they wouldn't stop. Now, Sharpton says that Gardner's death seems all too familiar, and a lot of folks said it bears some of the hallmarks of a couple other cases uh, that uh, were certainly uh, stories um, in, in question about police protocols and whether or not cops went too far. Take the case of 22-year-old Ernest Sayon. He died back in 94 after suffering a head injury following a struggle with a police officer also on Staten Island. The case of Anthony Baez also draws similarities to Gardner's case. Baez, also asthmatic, who died when an arrest went wrong in the Bronx back in 92. Apparently a football uh, hit a, a patrol car that was stationed in an officer, um, uh, used a chokehold at the time, resulting in his death. This also comes on the heels of a new study by the Civilian Complaint Review Board showing that more than 1,000 city residents have reported instances where New York Police uh, Department officers put them in chokeholds in the last five years, and there were 58 chokehold complaints as of July 1, and more than 1,000 allegations were reported between 2009 to 2013. 462 cases were investigated. All right. To answer where the line starts and stops with this, I want to bring in uh, Nicholas Casal, who is a former NYPD detective with an impressive career in law enforcement and counterterrorism. Nick, it's always good to have you here. Okay. Good to be here. Um, let's get some of the, the facts out of the way. Um, Mr. Gardner was told basically, put your hands out, we're going to cuff you, and he said no more. Apparently this was 30 times or whatever they'd been run-ins over loose cigarettes um, on the streets of Staten Island where he thought he was being harassed by the cops. Nonetheless, he didn't go along to get along, um, and, he, and he didn't uh, allow himself to be handcuffed. We then see the scene unfold. You've already seen the mayor, and you've already seen the police commissioner both say chokeholds have been outlawed uh, as of, I think you'll tell me, more than five and a half years ago, that they can no longer be used as a police, um, uh, you know, part of protocol. And you see right there the officer with what clearly looks to be a chokehold. Do you agree? Well, uh, you know, it, it's easy to say do you agree and not to disagree uh, after the introduction. But I, I think what we have to focus on here is, is not so much what the, the mayor thinks or the police commissioner thinks, it's what experts think. Uh, the chokehold actually was 
uh, done away with way before, uh, let's say, the Lavodi case or the, the Sayon case. Uh, it goes back to the Michael Stewart case. Uh, at that time in the police academy, officers were instructed uh, to use their nightstick in, in a manner to suppress uh, the oxygen intake, the, uh, have the person either lose conscious or, or submit. That was done away with. Chokeholds are prohibited. Uh, when could a chokehold be prohibited? Well, if, if the officer is in a fight for his life, he'll do whatever he has to. So it becomes then the, the equal of the use of, of deadly physical force to put somebody in a chokehold. But I think what we have here is two things. One is I'm not sure that that is a chokehold and not some form of neck suppression to put him down and to keep him down. But even dis discarding that, th the final arbitrator on this is not going to be the police eternal affairs or uh, the Richmond County District Attorney. It's going to be the medical examiner. The medical examiner is going to say, is his tra uh, trachea compressed or is this some sort of, of uh, bronchial spasm? And Nick, we, we're, we haven't gotten the ME's report yet. We're not going to know this. But here's the question that a lot of people say outside. Okay, we understand it if this guy had just run up on a curb and hit people in Staten Island and he was out of sorts here and the cops had to put this guy down because he was a menace to society. The guy was selling loose cigarettes. Now, nobody gets to say, no, you don't get to arrest me, police. But he wasn't presenting a danger to others or to himself at the time. And it wasn't one cop that was being outweighed by 150 pounds or whatever. There was a group of cops that were there. Did they really need to escalate it to that point, first off? Well, well, tactically, what we see here in the in I mean, the don't video, they have either pepper spray or don't they? I mean, maybe they didn't have tasers. Couldn't they have subdued him without a guy jumping on his back, putting him in a, you know, what at least looks like a chokehold? You know, again, hindsight is twenty twenty. But if we're going to dissect this, and, and you know, I've come out on, on incidents where the police are wrong and, and clearly say that they have. were wrong. But, but here, the officers actually use restraint. They're not getting involved, the two plainclothes officers, until additional officers respond on, on the scene. Uh, again, he's asthmatic. He's uh, grossly overweight. Had he been pepper sprayed and he gone into some sort of bronchial spasm, they would have said, why did you do that? But I think what we should focus on is him saying, no, I don't want to be arrested. I think we should focus on him going into a, 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 a trance, trying to work himself up, saying he wasn't going to be arrested. You know, while it's a trite and trivial offense, most police officers are seriously injured on trite and trivial car stops and domestic violence issues. So you, you, you got to take, you, you know, they you don't did, know. You're right, though. But when a scene is caught on video, it's not just um, what the ME says, it's not just what the internal affairs says, it's not even maybe what happens in a court of law. There's public opinion that gets involved in this as well. And by the way, when you got the police commissioner and the mayor saying, looks like a chokehold, it kind of leads public opinion one way already on that. My question is though, and I come back to it, if the guy, nobody gets to say, you don't get to arrest me cops. But when he's on the ground and he says, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, should they get off him? Well, I, I think the first thing, if he would have, again, submitted to, to but their he authority. Okay, he, he screwed did. up, but he didn't do it. Right. But at the point where he says, I don't want to get arrested, if you were on the scene, would you tell everybody, settle down here, all right? In the end, this isn't going to go your way. You're going to get arrested. Or would you want a guy jumping on his back, throwing a hammer lock? I think what I would want is the minute he's arrested, the minute he is in handcuffs, he is no longer a danger to the police officers. This case, the officers stop their actions immediately when both hands are handcuffed behind his back. Now it's an, uh, it's a, uh, an emergency medical service of the fire department issue. He said what he wanted... What the heck those guys were doing? Right. Who the he, hell knows, right? You know, the police Four guys show up without a defibrillator. They don't even give him mouth to mouth. Right. And you know, you know what? I've seen, I've seen a police officer shoot someone and go out of their way to try to save them. But th that's neither here nor there. What we have here is very simple. The minute that the, the Mr. Gardner, who, who becomes the perpetrator, who's under arrest, the defendant, says, I want to go to the hospital, the police officer doesn't analyze whether it's a, a legitimate request or not. The officer is required to remove him to the hospital, either by ambulance or, or have the EMS respond there and take him. Okay, you know, though, Nick, there's the other part of this, which isn't about protocol. It says, do you think for a second, if some guy was selling loose cigarettes in Scarsdale, New York, okay, Four cops would have jumped him and put him down the way they did, and basically a guy would be dead uh, because he was selling cigarettes on the streets of Main Street and Scarsdale. 
that is a big part of this because at the end of the day, the public has to have faith in the police and that justice is blind and everybody's going to get treated the same way. Right now, in Richmond County, they don't think so. They think if you're a black guy in Richmond County, you get treated one way. Whether it's fair or not, that's the perception out there right now. And is Pat Lynch right that you always give the benefit of the doubt to the cops? Well, I, I remember the Sayon case very right? well I mean, in, in Staten Island, and it didn't turn out the way that it was originally projected to have, have occurred. But I think Pat Lynch has this right, not because he defends all police officers who he views as blue, not by color. And, and look, Al Sharpton's a broken record and he seizes the opportunity. But having said that, you know, and, and discounting the fact that it was a tried and trivial case. If you ask me, should police officers be in, enforcing a uh, loose cigarette or tax cigarette, you know, that's, that's another show, another issue. Uh, but the, the idea was that they were directed out there, they, they saw an offense, and they, they took action upon it. You know, and, and that's what we have to deal with. If, if other jurisdictions don't want to get involved, then they're doing a discredit to the people that they serve. The, what we have to look at here is the police but commissioner... there is discretion, isn't there? There's a discretion, but, you know, most likely they were answering a complaint, and just because it was a, a simple thing as a, a parking violation or selling loose cigarettes, the person who made the complaint wants to see it answered. The politicians want the police to answer out the quality of life complaints that they're required to do. But you know what? A, a, again, I, I'm a, a little shocked at the police commissioner and definitely the mayor. That officer is no less a citizen than anybody else. And, and to, to come out and prejudge him, as Patty Lynch said, I think is a knee uh, jerk reaction. Let the facts, you know, the okay, best thing we have is the, the video. Where should be the standard for cops if it is to protect and to serve, right? You're right now uh, the family of the Gardner family, you, and, and we just heard earlier to our Dominic Carter, um, the, the mother of uh, his child, right? If his infant child uh, says, I don't think these guys should be cops anymore. I think they should lose their job. Well, From what you saw, right. and in the end, the conclusion, whether they meant to or not, I certainly don't think they went out that day, those cops, to say, let's go kill a guy for selling loose cigarettes. I don't think so. But at the end of the day, the guy's dead. Nobody should die in police custody. That's, that's number one, right? Uh, and, and I think that, that's, that's very important here. Uh, but once again, we have we have the video and the video is excellent because it memorializes the whole situation from the start to all the way through to to the the suppression if the medical examiner comes back with a finding if there remember the the ad officer's intent was never uh to 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 mm. inflict such a force as to kill him you know we'll look at it they'll analyze it and that's it. But I mean, as far Nick, as the just because I'm up against right. my question is, do you think and, and again, as you said, the next thing and maybe the most important thing is what the medical examiner comes back with. But after that report comes back, do you believe that we're going to see criminal charges filed in this case here? Or do you think that this will strictly be whether it's disciplinary or not within the police department and then the inevitable civil suit? Well, I mean, there's going to be a, a wrongful death right. suit here. But do you think but, there's criminal charges? Uh, I, you know, I, I don't see the criminal charges based upon the officer's actions, his intent, and, and what he did in, in whole with everybody else there. Uh, I think that in, in this matter, it'll be presented, uh, if it is presented, which I'm not sure it would be, but if it was presented to grand jury, you know, the grand jury has to vote a true bill. And we may see hear the same rhetoric uh, again. Mm -hmm that uh, if the grand jury doesn't or the district attorney doesn't uh, apply a, yep. uh, a case. But the officer, after listening to Police Commissioner Bratton, the officer is going to probably uh, stand at a department trial, and, and that would be uh, Commissioner Bratton's final determination of the facts of guilt or innocent, and whether he stays a cop or not. Nick, I have a feeling we're going to be talking about this case again here before the summer's out. I appreciate the time, as always. Thank you so much. When we come back, everyone, we're going to take a look at an issue uh, also making headlines. Uh, college sexual assault investigations across the country on the rise and how some students who have been victimized are too afraid to even come forward. After the break, we'll be speaking with a criminal prosecutor who has helped many people bring their attackers to justice. But we'll talk about how this is a complicated issue. Stay with us.